Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a look at all the big changes in the second big patch update for Episode 7 of Ragnarok Mobile Eternal Love. There will be lots of new features and optimizations included in this update such as the new Wasteland extension maps, new Spirit Tree, new Advanced Runes, free headwares for Fork Job, and optimizations for Intensis, GVG, and MVP interface. We're expecting that this patch will come to C and Global Server after the maintenance next week. There is also a chance that it might include the Ronin crossover event which lets you draw costumes, headwares, and a new job class using Big Cat coins. Before we begin though, I'd like to give special thanks to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Raid is a turn-based battle RPG with realistic style graphics. It's free to play and is available on both mobile and PC. Check out my links below if you'd like to try it out. Now for a quick tour of the interface, the index here is where we'll find all the champions organized into 16 factions all with their unique affinities, roles, and skill sets. This large pool of champions allow us to create various team setups depending on the type of battle. Next, we have the portal where we can summon new champions. And then here we have the tavern where we can sacrifice champions to level up our favorite ones. Once we have assembled our team, we can do the campaign battles, which is a must to train our champions and gain generous amount of loot such as artifacts and silver. We can also do classic arena PvP battles where we can get weekly rewards as we climb up the ranks. Now speaking of PvP, a brand new feature has been launched in the game which is a tag team arena. This takes competition PvP battles to the next level. Unlike the single 4 vs 4 battle in Classic Arena, the tag team arena is a series of free 4 vs 4 battles. Whoever wins 2 battles wins the series and would boost their rank. Huge rewards await those who manage to rank high so you better not miss a tag team arena. If you guys would like to try Raid Shadow Legends, check out the links in the description box down below. As a gift for new players, using the link below will give you 100,000 silver and a champion for free. You'll be able to get a Dark Elf Hex Weaver which is a rare support type champion. Note that you'll get these rewards in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First up, we have the update of various quests in Luyang. First is a continuation of the Luyang main quest. Just head to Luyang to start the next journey of Fate Mission. Completing this part will grant this headwear. Next, we have the addition of new anecdote quests in Sunset Beach and White Bait Lake. Next, there will be four new series of quests added to Luyang Singra Master Box, which will unlock new headwares. And lastly, we have the addition of Luyang Minstrel Quests, which you can acquire at base level 135. Next, we have the changes related to Wasteland Map. First, there will be new world MVP in Wasteland called Dragon Skeleton, which is of Ghost Element, Dragon Race, and Medium Size. It will spawn in the altar located in the upper left corner of the Wasteland map every even number o'clock GMT plus 7 or odd number o'clock GMT plus 8. The rewards for participating in killing this world boss are Hourglass and Spirit Tree upgrade materials. In addition, there is also a chance that it will drop the item Horns of Evil Dragon for the whole server, which can be obtained once a week. Just submit this item to Kashnut NPC in Moonlight Grotto to receive Spirit Tree upgrade materials. If someone in the server has already submitted them, you can also claim their rewards from the NPC once a week. Other notable items dropped by Dragon Skeleton are the Silent Sinking Face item and the Dragon Skeleton card. Next, it will now be easier to get daily reward chests from killing elite monsters as the drop rate will no longer be affected by fatigue. In addition, the strength of some elite monsters have been reduced and now spawn faster. Next, the difficulty of Tristan's fantasy minigames have been adjusted for easier completion. For example, if two cards are revealed for the first time in the card matching game, they will no longer be penalized by time deduction. In monster photography, three skulls have been added which can kill designated monsters, repel monsters, and reset the current round of monsters. And lastly, a new challenge mode for Tristan's fantasy minigames will be open for players who pass level 10. Active participation will let you rank up in the server leaderboard. Next, we have the addition of two new gameplay maps, Maple Leaf and Frostfield, which is similar to Wasteland. Players who have completed the main Wasteland quest can receive the Maple Leaf main quest, which unlocks the new Spirit Tree. This can also be upgraded using Wasteland materials. 
Similar to Wasteland, there are also new elite monsters and world MVP found here. What's different about this map is the addition of Chaos Aura feature which allows you to see more monsters as you collect more Chaos Breath. We'll talk about the new gameplay for Maple Leaf and Frostfield in detail in separate videos, so stay tuned for that. Next, those who have finished the fourth job transfer quest will get free exclusive headwares for the corresponding profession. It will be automatically sent to you after the maintenance. In addition, Rune Masters will get a new weapon skin which can be purchased from the Thanatos Tower shop. Next, we have the addition of a new type of skill rune called Star Runes. Each job class will get two Class S level Star Runes, which you can get by either of these two methods. First is by exchanging 30 Braves Holy Emblem into one Dusty Runestone Star. There's a max limit of two purchases per week. The other method is by topping up and buying the Dusty Runestone Star from the Big Cat Coin Mall, which will be at a 20% discount for a limited time. Take note that these new star runes are not interlinked with the old skill runes, meaning you cannot convert the current class B, A, and S runes into star runes. Another change related to advanced runes is the addition of 3 slots for skill runes and 4 slots for the attribute runes, so you'll now be able to use 6 skill runes and 10 attribute runes. Additionally, the max level of attribute runes has been increased from 10 to 15. Up next, we have the optimization for weekly instances. First, for Oracle, the weekly minimum difficulty reward collection has been removed. Instead, you will now get the rewards for all difficulty upon completing a harder difficulty. After the update, you just need to finish Oracle Nightmare Mode to get your rewards for easy, normal, and hard difficulties. Next, for Echoing Corridor, a few changes have been made such as the removal of ghost mobs that could teleport, optimization of the range of summoning mobs, an addition of a prompt message when a teammate leaves or gets disconnected. Additionally, Eager Leaf can now be used for resurrection. Next, for Tanatos Tower, an Angel Snow Feather has been added to the shop, which you can exchange for 1,000 rune coins. You will need 6 pieces to craft the legendary Raph Greasy Fallen Feather back item. And lastly, for Battle of Cake, the user interface of the defense towers, the message prompts when rewards conditions are met, and the rules of the battle have all been optimized. The wave of each MVP has also been extended to have longer preparation time. Next, there will be addition of two new pets which you can capture from the field and three new pets obtained by Pet Fusion. If you want to know their taming items, Pet Fusion materials, and skills, I'll have my Episode 7 Pets video linked down below. In addition, there will also be two new pet adventure maps for the Luyang region, which I've also discussed in the Episode 7 Pets video. Next, we have the upgraded version of Kitty Cats. Just finish the quest in Frontera to unlock the advanced mercenary cat function. Boosting the level of your Kitty Cats can be used to acquire new mercenary cat skills. There will also be new commissioned quests from Sanchez Sewer of the mercenary group every 3 days. The rewards for finishing these quests are mercenary cat experience and mercenary cat coins. These coins can be used to purchase exclusive headwares and items for mercenary cats. Next, we have the optimization of the MVP interface. You can now mark the minis and MVPs you want to hunt according to your preference. This will put them on top of the interface for easier tracking. Next, another change related to MVPs is the addition of the new adventure skill Precision Hunting. After setting, it will lock on the MVP or mini monster when it appears in range. It will also prevent the unnecessary use of flywing when the MVP is in range. Next, we have the changes related to cards. First is the addition of 6 new craftable cards in King Pouring which we already talked about in the Episode 7 cards video. If you haven't watched that, I have the video link down below. Second is the optimization of card interface wherein you can now purchase missing card materials via quick purchase function. And last is the optimization in card albums wherein they can now be opened in batches. Next, we have the optimizations related to guild versus guild battles. First, there will now be a notification if a guild member has broken an Imperium and occupied a castle in War of Imperium. A message prompt will be sent to the guild channel as to where the new castle is located. 
Next, the Imperium in War of Imperium and War of Crystals will have higher HP. And lastly, a single damage to the Imperium will not exceed 1 30th of its max HP. Next, we have changes related to some skills. First, Rangers can now cast Prepare for Elite while mounted on Warg. Second, the issue where Arcane Master's Flame Guardian can resist non-magical damage will be fixed. To block non-magic damage, Arcane Masters need to get the new Star Rune. Third, the logic of auto battle when casting ensemble skills with Solar Traver and Lunatus' Illusion Puppet will be optimized. And lastly, shields that absorb damage are no longer immune to the debuff and abnormal status attached to attack. Shields include Tuna Party, Flame Guardian, Dragon Soul, Soul Protection, and Shadow Festival. Up next, the garment Death Cut Cape, which is dropped by Devlink, now supports slotting. This is good news for players with HP base build as they can now inlay Eclipse Dark card on it for more HP. Next, four new attributes are added. Bleeding Attack, Bleeding Resistance, Darkness Attack, and Darkness Resistance. Abnormal Status Attack or Resistance is also effective for these two types of attributes. Next, a new store Blessing of the Goddess has been added to Pantera, Civ, and PC or in some of the furniture items you've unlocked in the Adventure Handbook can now be purchased at a low price. Next, you can now select whether to consume Belief Tokens or Zenny when upgrading Guild Blessing. And lastly, we have optimizations related to Fashion and Adventure Handbook. First is the addition of headwares with refined deposit attributes. Some refined headwares will also get extra animations. Second, we have the additional costumes that can be worn by the Doram race. Third, we have the addition of cart interface in the handbook, which allows you to store cards and choose the appearance. Fourth, the mount interface now includes description of depositing and obtaining attributes in mount and pet mount. In addition, you can now open the mount interface to use the mount skills directly. And lastly, Prantera Barbershop now has more colors to choose from. Alright, so far I've gone through the changes coming in the second big patch update of episode 7. This is based on what was released in the second episode 7 patch update in the China server, so it's more likely that the C and global servers will get a similar update. Alright, that's it for this video guys, don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.